Hello, I'm Lowell Martin, and this is MCC Today, where the magic happens. On today's show, we have Ms. Loretta Chisholm, Dr. John Mark Kane, and Dr. Marie Roberts. You're going to want to listen to this. You're going to learn so much. Not essential. Never let anyone tell you that again. Never doubt your abilities to make a difference. How do I know this about you? Because I'm a teacher. I am the one who will push you harder and farther than you could have ever imagined. Teach you things that you never thought possible. And if you will give me 100%, then I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you and together we will change your future. MCC, find your wings. The path to your future is only a click away. Find your wings at MCC. And we have Ms. the wonderful Miss Loretta Chis Chisholm who is our lifelong learning coordinator at Meridian Community College. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Lau. You doing well? I am doing well. We enjoying ourselves after this wonderful weather we've been having. Yeah, yesterday was my birthday, so I really enjoyed it. Did you have a good birthday? 21? 31. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty pays. Okay, yes, it, it truly does. Well, I hope you had a really good birthday. Thank you. Well, now you want, you, you're on the show today because you've got a couple of things you want to talk about. Yes. And so let's go ahead and get started. So you work in, as I said, you're a lifelong learning coordinator and you have some stuff with, that's happening with continuing ed? Yes. So we're trying to focus on having some positive activities where people actually get to learn something and enjoy themselves. That's, okay. that's, that's my mission statement, my personal mission statement sure. for my department. Sure. So we have several classes that are coming up that I just want to make sure that the community and anyone that's interested will know about. Okay. And I'm going to be looking at my sheets because sure. I can't that's remember fine. all the dates that's and fine. everything. The first want one, the information to be accurate. Exactly. <laughs> the first one that I would like to mention is, is going to be called charcuterie. Okay. And that is going to be a class where we're actually learning how to make boards decorated with different types of meats. Okay. Cheeses. Okay. Honey. Huh. You, you're my age. I can see you don't know what it is. But no, I don't. There is a section of persons that are a certain age. They know what this is. Okay. I didn't either. Okay. But actually, I saw a picture, and I can show you a picture of what it looks like. Okay. Oh, my. But to actually oh get to make one, there is a person in our community by the name of Khaki. And she owns a business called the Tr Charcuterie Chick, and she's going to come over and teach that class. Wow. Okay. And, and how much does it cost? It costs sixty-five dollars, and it's going to be on June the tenth, from six to seven thirty. All your supplies. All you have to do is bring yourself and a in. willing attitude, and you'll be able to leave with one of those boys that I just described okay, to you. Okay. Okay. Well, that is wonderful. All right. What else? All right. What we've else? also had a, a person that's actually a flight instructor in the Columbus area that wants to broaden our horizons about um, careers in the aviation field. Okay. So we're going to have a, a seminar called Learning to Fly Seminar. Oh my. And it's going to be virtual or you can come to the Workforce Development Center to attend this class. Okay. That will also be on Tuesday, June the 10th from 5.30 to 7. Okay. So you can, if you would like to register for that, you can call our number, which I'll give at the end. Okay. You can do it virtually or you can come in person and actually meet a person that's going to be giving this information. Oh my. Have you ever been interested in flying? Never. <laughs> I'm interested in a theoretical. <laughs> you know how it's like, you think, okay, it might be nice to know how to do that, but if you're, because you see the cockpit and you see all the stuff that's there and you're like, I have to do that, ooh. I could teach the flight attendant school, but I would want it on the ground. Okay. When they get ready to fly, I would not be the person that goes out you're like, that not me. I could teach them good customer service skills. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. What else we got? We got it. Okay, um, the next class that I want to mention is going to be a couponing class. This okay. is something that's very popular now. Everybody's okay. trying to save money. Yep. I used to be a big couponer myself. I'm not now, but we have someone. You became independently wealthy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or not buying as much that I didn't need or, or my child is grown now. I'm joking with you. Okay. But we have an um, instructor here by the guy named Cicely Barksdale, okay. who is an expert couponer. Really? Yes. She, she's going to be showing you how to actually use your phone to be able to coupon. Okay. Now, one thing that I like about this class is going to be in-house instruction, but also we're going to have field trips to local stores in the community where she's going to actually show you how to work your couponing skills. I can't. That that sounds like fun. 
Okay. Good well, all of them sound like fun, but so many people sound like, you know, because they're really interested in the couponing. Yes. So she'll be showing you how to work the different apps. Okay. Um, different things on um, YouTube. Okay. And like I said, this this I think this will be very interesting. I'm going to be there for that class. Now, how much does that cost? That class is sixty dollars per person, okay. and it's four nights. Okay. So there Start will be June June 10th? June the eighth. June eighth. June the eighth. It'll be t the four Tuesdays. Okay. And that last Tuesday. Uh, that's when we'll be actually going out in the communities, the stores, and learn how to coupon. Oh, that's going. I bet that will be a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of people interested in that. I hope so. I think so. Now, if anyone is interested, was, are there any other classes? I got one more. one more. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. Yes. May is Older American Month. Oh, my And Lyle, I have good news. <laughs> we are Older Americans. Just, yeah. <laughs> I, so I've realized I have that. another person that has uh, come and taught several of our layperson classes. She is very interested in this because this is something she's done for her family. And she's going to um, talk to persons that are caregivers. And I thought I would try to I was trying to target the old Americans. Anybody can be a caregiver at any time. Right. Life makes a change. You might have to be caregiver of your husband, a child, or neighbor. She's going to give pertinent information to persons that are interested in it. And that's going to be next Tuesday. Oh my, okay. I think that would that's another class that I think is gonna be would be very interesting. You yes. know, because as you the thing things change so much as you age and your perspective changes so much as it you does. age and you start real coming to some realizations. You know, I'm I'm gonna be fifty eight this summer and it start you know, it starts dawn on, dawning on you, it's like, hey, there are things that you can't do anymore. Correct. And I don't mean that in a bad way because there are other things that, that I can do. But, I mean, there are certain realizations, and I think that's important. I think something like that is And it doesn't have to be an older person. It could right. be someone involved in a car accident. Sure, sure. Or you could hurt your leg. i got to be your caregiver this week. So yep. you just, you know, it's from one spectrum to the next, so you just okay. have to be ready. So if anyone is interested in these classes, how do they sign up? Okay. You can call 601-482-7445. And also I'm going to give my personal information. My name is Loretta Chislam, and you can call me. My phone calls come directly to my cell phone. So my work office number is 601-553-3484. Okay. And can they pay online? Can they pay when they're paying for this, or do you know? They have to dial really that number, that, I, that first number I okay. mentioned to do those payments okay, over the phone. Okay, and then they can, they can pay, the, pay over the phone yes. as they want to, okay. Now, we you'd also wanted to talk about, are, are there any other opportunities that we have coming up that you'd like well, to? Well, the last one that um, is gonna be for persons in high school or college that's trying to get their ACT score up, we have okay. one more ACT session before the fall comes, and it's gonna be on June the 9th. Okay, and how much does that cost? I think it's $125. Okay. Is it a one-day? It's a one-day seminar where the instructor actually worked for the ACT company, so she knows different type of strategies or trick questions, and mm -hmm. she's going to be able to allow, um, allow those persons to get those scores higher. And I have known people who have taken that, and it has really helped them when they take, take it, because so much depends on the ACT score, unfortunately. Correct. You know, it, it, it's a, but, but you want to have as high a score as you can, Correct. to have as many opportunities as possible. It sounds like we got a lot going on. We sure do. I am so happy that we have a lot going on, and I want people out there uh, to, to come here and take advantage of all of this. And I want to have you on again to tell us more about, you know, anything else that's this coming This fall, up. I'll be back. Oh, well, I'm so glad to hear that. And, and we're going to be ready, and to thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure. We'll be right back. Meridian Community College. For more than 75 years, we've helped students soar. Establishing the first tuition guarantee program in Mississippi, we put our students first while creating pathways into the workforce and offering a seamless transition to a four-year degree. Now is the time to find your purpose and register today because those who move forward never get left behind. MCC, find your wings. And we are back and we have Dr. John Mark Kane and we have Dr. Marie Roberts. Welcome both of you. Now you're a superintendent of Lauderdale County and you have been for the past three years, you say, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, and you are the uh, inst instructional technologist. Yes, that is correct. Yahoo, Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, it's, a, it's a fun job during a COVID pandemic response year for sure. And there have been a lot of uh, interesting changes. We've had to move in ways and directions we did not know we could move in. But one thing that y'all have done is uh, uh, really fully embrace Canvas 
as a learning management system. Now, Meridian Community College, we've been using it for a number of years now, but uh, you've started, now when did you officially start using Canvas as your, you know, as your main resource? Well, we, we looked at it early on, actually a couple of years ago during our strategic planning process, and we, we understood that we wanted to kind of go in that direction to help our students transition into higher ed. Uh, and so it was on our books to, to move in that direction of, for LMS. Uh, what we didn't anticipate was just a few months later, uh, you know, this pandemic coming and, and us being uh, basically forced to pivot within two weeks uh, to try to find a way of, of making this more of a, a daily thing, a reality in our K-12 setting. As you mentioned, uh, it's been around in the community college and, and, and IHL for a number of years now, but uh, it really had not made its way to K-12. So. We were looking early and then, uh, you know, this thing called COVID hit and so we, we had to go into rapid speed mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, MCC's partnership and with the leadership of Dr. Roberts, we were able to make that transition a little faster than we ever thought possible But and we're still learning, we're still getting mm -hmm. in there, but uh, it's definitely guided us through this, the last uh, 12 months. How do, how, what do the teachers think about Canvas, if you don't mind me asking? Are they, are they, I, and I know they're on board, I know, I, I know that, but are they, are they, I know, are they willing, are they, you know what I mean? Are they, are they on board with this and saying, okay, let's do this, let's. Honestly, having coming into the district, I'm continue to be impressed by the willingness of our teachers to go above mm -hmm. and beyond for the students. Um, in general, though, showing them hands-on applications, here how you can use it, here are some ways that it may can actually make your classroom management easier or um, simpler or mm -hmm. cleaner, that has been encouraging. Our teachers have been very willing to participate in trainings and receive professional development and really kind of go out and search. Um, I have the privilege of going into classrooms and working with teachers one-on-one -on -one or in small mm -hmm. group settings and even virtually doing, you know, sessions like that. And our teachers continue to say, you know, I want to do it better. How can I, how can I improve it? Um, they're kind of like a dog with a ball inside to speak. When you give it to them, they're, they're, they're wanting to run with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes I have to say, hold up, hold up. We're not quite there yet. Um, let's, let's get really good at doing the, the, the fundamental things, you know, making sure that we're communicating clearly, that we're, um, you know, because with, with the virtual type classroom, um, you don't have the benefit of that face-to-face -face social cues and, you know, constant reminders. And so our teachers have been very good at, at as I mentioned, pivoting to um, delivering information this way. And with the added feature of us having some face-to-face -face components um, with classes a couple of days a week, um, they are able to use Canvas really as a supplement to their classroom, as an archive for um, what's happening in class, for, in case of students have to go into quarantine and things of that nature but in general our teachers have been very receptive um, and they really are the, the winners here because they have gone above and beyond. I'm going to really say yes uh, because I've got some grandkids in the county schools <clears throat> and they are I have been so impressed with the teachers I've been so impressed I get texts from the teachers constantly saying we're doing this make sure that they do this for their homework or they have this I uh, uh, before you know y'all had gotten into the canvas stuff or that I heard that you got had gotten into it I was getting you know saying this is my YouTube channel you know uh, you know and I would literally we would watch and it was a science teacher who was like okay and she was in front of you know had the whiteboard and she was teaching her lesson mm -hmm. so they were definitely stepping up to the plate I think but I think canvas will really help them a lot and what do you see going forward <coughs> Well, with canvas excuse yeah, me well you know we we are still you know uh, conditioning uh, building capacity trying to reach out to other districts who have uh, kind of led this before us uh, we, we've got some partner districts that have kind of done this one year ahead of us mm -hmm. and so we're partnering with them to, to kind of help us continue to grow and some of those hiccups that they ran into let their uh, experiences kind of calm some of our fears um, and uh, again, it's been very successful with that implementation at the 512 level. And mm -hmm. uh, next year, we're looking at proceeding to move into the K4 realm with, with Canvas. So uh, we know there's still going to be some challenges there, but uh, we're, we're definitely looking to do that. And we actually here at M2C, we've, we've been mentoring and we've been helping out some with this. And I, mm -hmm. I uh, had the privilege of working with a teacher uh, last year. and. I, you know, uh, just showing, you know, this is what we do, this is why you can do it, this is, you know, and they were very receptive to, you know, to 
this new model? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think any time that you can share knowledge and, and showcase how you may be using it and kind of talk through real world application, here's how, how, here's how I use it to teach or here's how I use it to communicate. It's very helpful um, mm -hmm. for our teachers. Um, one of the things that he mentioned about us moving to Canvas for K through four, especially next year, the biggest challenge isn't the technology, it's not the internet access, it's not the, the type of device. The, the biggest thing that we want to really encourage is our families of our students to really stay engaged. Mm -hmm. um, reminding your students, hey, have you checked Canvas? Can I help you. Um, we provide some training for those parents and those family members and so really just kind of keeping them engaged and seeing um, that they come alongside their student and support them um, is, is really the best measure of success that we can have. A teacher can put all the lessons out there and put all of their content and, and post those awesome videos and, and share recordings of things but um, at the end of the day we really want our families to be engaged with our students to help them um, through this process. Have you found that the, you have many uh, or you have a difficulty with students having access to Wi-Fi? Is that been a, a challenge? You know, early on when we were looking at making this pivot, I guess, you know, use that word, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it was, it was in March. Um, yes, uh, we had done surveys prior to that looking at probably about 40% of our population uh, did not have access. And uh, so we kind of knew that, again, that was some kind of things we were being proactive and, and kind of go ahead and, and understanding where we were with that. Um, but with the the, uh, the stimulus money and the CARES mm -hmm. Act money that came along, we were able to purchase uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, had those readily available for any any student. Uh, we see the states made um, tremendous, uh, I guess, allocations toward mm -hmm. expanding Wi-Fi in the rural communities, and and so really now we we feel pretty good about uh, you know connectivity being mm -hmm. able to do that. And, you know we were a desert. There was no doubt. But sure. within 12 months, I tell you, we've we've really made tremendous progress in that. And uh, you know early on, that was the, the the conversation everybody had. Well, we don't have access, but that's that's not the conversation we're having anymore. Now it's about how do we train? How do we become better at it? How do we use this to its full uh, potential moving mm -hmm. forward? One of the things that I ask myself as a, uh, a, an online instructor is I want to make sure that they are getting the same level of instruction that they would in the classroom. Yep. And I know that's been a big push. Mm -hmm. How do you try to make sure that they're getting the same quality instruction through Canvas that they are in the classroom? So for this year, we were lucky enough that all of our high quality educators in our district were also the ones teaching in Canvas. So it wasn't a, a different teacher or a third party company or a vendor of that nature. So the same teacher who would have been teaching that student face to face was, was also teaching them in Canvas. So we know that the quality is there. Our teachers, as I mentioned, have gone above and beyond. In addition to that, they're using the same content. It's still those state aligned standards. It's just the delivery method has changed. Um, I, I, t I told our teachers kind of early on, you think about that awesome pizza place that you know and love instead of eating in the restaurant now, you're, you're taking it to go. It's the same quality, it's the same ingredients, we're just bringing it to you in a little bit of a different way. Um, so once we, we manage those challenges of you know, connectivity through internet and then we also issued devices to our students in October of this past academic year, we were able to put an iPad in the hands of the majority of our students. And Excellent. so um, and we'll continue that for the upcoming years. And so now with the connectivity issues solved and device issues solved, um, that, that quality of instruction being handled by our teachers has been great. And we have to take a short break, but I want to come back and continue this conversation about the about Canvas because I think uh, uh, I'm I think this is going to be a really good thing. I, I'm looking forward to this. We'll be right back. Since 1996, the MCC Foundation Tuition Guarantee Program has provided students an opportunity to find their potential. Thousands of students have benefited from the program. Over $6 million have been invested in the students who learn and live right here in our community. This program is funded by individuals and businesses who believe in our students, our families, and the economic impact of an education at Meridian Community College. Now is your chance to offer support. Give today at meridiancc.edu slash give. And we are back with Dr. Kane and Dr. Roberts uh, from Lauderdale County. Now, uh, we were talking about Canvas and we were talking about uh, instruction in the classroom and trying to make sure or ensure that it is the same level of quality. Uh, and uh, what do you foresee? Because this is one of the things that we're dealing with, I hate to say it like that, but that we're doing here at MCC because we were challenged in many ways and we had to do things mm -hmm because of COVID. And now that we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, 
what things are we going to keep <laughs> right. Right. and what things are we going to return to the COVID box <laughs> yeah yes yeah. so okay. have you given any thought to that and <clears throat> what have you come up with you know I think it's going to be uh, really community de uh, uh, dependent I, I, I've talked to a lot of different superintendents around the state uh, and these same questions are coming up I mean uh, in, in group meetings and where does this go you know was do we do we go this far or we bring it back this way how much is that I think there's still a lot of discussion to be to be had in that but obviously school districts will respond to the communities mm -hmm. uh, you know if a community uh, sees the merit in it and wants to to be a, a total option I think schools will end up having to adapt to that mm -hmm. uh, but in the end I think you know uh, schools will always provide what the community expects and so uh, I think there's still a lot of questions on the table about you know who and how uh, but for us we just said we got to be prepared no matter what what that comes out to be and so uh, we're, we're still we're still looking at it and trying to decide what's the, the, the you know the best course of action and uh, again we'll be responsive to our community needs have you been um, are you satisfied are you encouraged by uh, how the students have fared during this time I, I think what we've seen early on, and, and because we, there's a maturation difference between K-12 students and, and higher ed students, uh, maybe in high school and, and, and things, but we, we know that there's a segment of this population, even our K-12 population, who, who has the, uh, the internal drive and that push to, to be able to do that. Uh, it, it does take a different skill set, you know, to, to be able to truly be successful and engaged and, and be able to do that. It's not for everybody. That's mm -hmm. what we have noticed. We have seen kids who, uh, mostly out of fear, probably who who uh, didn't return to that traditional setting this year, uh, and some of them were not able to do as well. But mm -hmm. just because they they didn't perhaps may have the maturation, they didn't have the the, the the family support, they didn't have those all these other instruments that need to be in place to be successful. So. Uh, we know that it, it's, it's definitely going to be another tool in our toolbox. We're just trying to figure out, you know, where in the toolbox that it's actually going to fall. Now, do you, do you notice a, a, a generational acceptance or reluctance? You know, that some parents are more, they're more okay with the kids learning more on Canvas or whatever. Because I've, I've literally had conversations mm -hmm. with parents or people saying well it's they're not getting it's not the same they're not right. get, it's not as good right you know and, and I worked with that you know in, sure. in teaching my classes too but uh, you know and I, I can say now so without question it is as good right. you're learning the same thing right. I'm doing you know it's just different yeah, it, you run into that yeah we run into that it's and it's it's really what people feel like their their mindset of their their mind's eye of what education looks like you sure know? so I think the challenge is we have a generation of students now who uh, have a digital watch that they get their news from they, they learn on their phone when they're at home they learn at phone on their phone on their device uh, you know the the other 12 hours that we don't have them or whatever it may be but then in eight hours we think it needs learning needs to look totally different mm -hmm. and I think that's the dichotomy that we're running into is the fact that we have to learn that there will have to be some adaption to the way a new generation is learning everything around the world mm -hmm. versus the way we did it in the past and so that's that's why you know having Dr. Roberts having the relationship with Meridian Community College uh, being able to continue to build capacity with our teachers and them becoming more comfortable with uh, you know this new medium of, of, of learning now I don't and I don't know if y'all do this but we had a, a few years ago had a big push into ebooks do y'all think y'all will might, might be more receptive or you might have a push into we're, students using ebooks. Yeah, we're seeing more and more of that. Even our library this past year, we, we were able to join a, um, a, a consortium, consortium uh, called Epic and we had digital library books available um, and, uh, and we're going to add more, invest more in that. And mm -hmm. we see publishers now looking mm -hmm. at more digital content mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it just makes sense. You know, the world changes so fast, technology changes so fast. 
you know, we buy a book, we hold it for six years, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's basically out of date within six months now. So mm -hmm. having, the, having that instant information at our fingertips, it's just, it's just the way we learn now. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have to continue to adapt you know, and, and move forward. I'm going to put Marie on the spot here because she loves it so much. But <laughs> as, as the technologist, where do you foresee it kind of being in five years? So I, I try to give people the idea of um, it's not face-to-face -face or virtual. For, for me, I think education in general is going to continue to be technology infused. Mm -hmm. That may look like an eight-hour school day, five days a week. You just happen to have a device in your hand where you're reading that book or you're mm -hmm. doing some differentiation where you have students who are working in small groups with this video or this PowerPoint presentation. And so even if we're physically located right next to each other, our technology is now infusing what we're doing with education. So even if there is no virtual or those set face-to-face, -face, we've made the investments and the commitment in the connectivity and in the devices that we want students to be comfortable because in reality they get out and go into the workforce, they move on to higher education. The expectation is there that they will have digital citizenship and digital literacy skills of how to send an email, how to um, you know work a spreadsheet, how to do computer-based applications. Um, and that unfortunately the culture that we're moving to, we need to infuse those skills into their education regardless of if they're face-to-face -face or virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so for me I think education is going to um, kind of surround ourselves in the idea that paradigm shift of my student may be face to face but they're still going to use that device the recording are still going to be located there um, they may re you know, may connect with a teacher maybe in a classroom next door um, you know you think about the opportunities that are available out there um, you know very succinct subjects that are you know, let's just say hypothetically a foreign language that one mm -hmm. of our students wants to take if we don't have an instructor um, available in our rural area the ability to to deliver that instruction to that student is, is a career mm -hmm. changer right it's, it's a door opener for that mm -hmm. student and you would say that we're going to continue our work together, MCC and Lauderdale County, as far as working with Canvas. And, well, we, we, we're, we work closely together anyway, but as far as helping out now, uh, um, and you said we're going to be going to the uh, uh, K through 4th this time. Uh, what do you hope to get from all of this, this mentoring, you know, from us and you know, I mean, how can we help you? Uh, have we helped you? Uh, I, you know, how, I, I'm not asking the question right, but have we helped you in the way that you needed help? <laughs> Um, I think our teachers have an increased confidence in their Canvas skills. Um, they mm -hmm. also have uh, an additional resource. There's just one of me, right? But now they have a, another person they can go to for questions or for help, and they can see this is possible. This is doable. It is not an insurmountable task. And so having those confidence skill, having those skills to um, have increased confidence, but as well just having a relationship, having another professional network resource to turn to for questions mm -hmm. or for help. Well, I look forward to hopefully mentoring someone else next year. I think because, like I said, I had we'll a very good time. Last. I appreciate that. Well, we are run out. Of, we're out of time, but I do hope to have both of you on again and let's talk about this again. It's a fascinating sure. subject. Yes, sir. Thank you sure. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back. With so much uncertainty in our world, we are thankful for the heart and determination of those who have followed their calling in healthcare. They work tirelessly on the front lines every day to make a true difference in our community. At Meridian Community College, we take pride in training these heroes and are grateful for their service in this time of great need. These eagles found their wings at Meridian Community College. The path to your future is only a click away. Find your wings at MCC. On behalf of executive producer Matt Milner, media consultant Josh Taylor, and me, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned just a little bit, and we'll see you next week.